Hey guys, Colleen here at DIYer behind LemonThistle.com and today I'm excited to share my fireplace makeover with you guys. This is a project that only took us like a weekend to do, but we have been staring at it since we moved in a year and a half ago. So in this video I want to show you the before, the after, the reveal, all the things that we did, but I really want to focus on how we painted the brick because this is not not my first time painting brick and this time was definitely the fastest and the easiest. When we moved in a year and a half ago this fireplace was painted like a creamy white color. So when we painted the entire main floor from the green that it was to a bright white, the creamy white just looked dirty all the time. So I had always planned to paint it but from painting brick before, I just felt like that was such a big job and I was not in for it. <laughs> so I put it off. And when I have painted brick in the past, I've painted natural stone and brick from its like original state to painted white. And so I'm going to include some tips from that experience as well. But this time it was already creamy, so that just saved me the primer. Before we get started, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would so love if you did that below so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. Okay, so the first thing that you'll need to do is to clear off your fireplace. So for us, that meant taking out the gas insert and taking off the mantle and the tile on the hearth, if you wanna keep your tile and keep your mantle and just mask those, but we wanted to start fresh. So we stripped those off and that was a bit more of a process than we had expected. The mantle was glued down so well, it chipped the brick pulling the glue off. Like the glue adhered to the brick better than the brick adhered to itself. <laughs> and then the mantle wasn't tile, it was vinyl. So we peeled that back and that left a ton of glue. So I didn't record the process, but I used Goo Gone on the floor glue that glued the vinyl onto the marble and I scraped it off with a razor blade. This worked super well and then I cleaned it with TSP. This did leave us with the problem of the edge of the tile being thicker than we'd expected because the marble was thick. So we couldn't use the Schluter that we had planned on. So we came up with a custom solution, which I'll get to later. Back to cleaning and preparing for paint. After we removed everything, I gave it a good vacuum and then I wiped it down with some TSP and it is meant to prep for paint. So when you're done that, then wipe it down again with water and you're ready to paint. So what kind of paint should you use? This brick had already been painted, so we were able to skip the first step. But if your brick or your stone has never been painted, you will need a primer that is specifically meant for masonry. This stuff is super stinky, but it's super effective. It will stick to your brick and it will stay on for a long time. I used this on our last fireplace when we did it, but I was excited to see that this brick was already painted so I could skip this step. After you've painted it with a masonry specific primer, you can use whatever paint you want. We just used our interior wall paint on this. There are two ways to paint. You could paint by hand using a brush and you'll need to use a brush that you don't mind tossing in the trash when you're done because the brick or the stone will destroy it. So make sure you get into the grout lines and then paint the faces afterwards. And I do have a, I don't know if it's a video or a blog post, but I will link that down below from when I did our stone fireplace by hand at our last house. If you are going to use a paint sprayer like we are, then the most important step is masking your space. Using a paint sprayer indoors freaked me out just because the masking seemed overwhelming, but now that we've done it, and I think we went a little bit overboard, but it worked so well. Let me show you what we did. We started out by putting paper on the floor. We used painter's tape so that it was right up to the trim that we were painting to protect the floor. This paper can be found in the painting section of a hardware store in giant rolls. After we masked the floor, we masked the area from the rest of the house. So I used double-sided tape on either side of the fireplace where I wanted to protect the walls. And on the back side of this fireplace, I wanted to protect my kitchen cabinets because the kitchen cabinets are actually mounted to the back side of the brick. You can find double-sided painter's tape in the painting section as well, as well as this plastic drop cloth sheeting. So I did the sides first and when I'm attaching it to the ceiling, I just use a staple gun. You could tape it if you prefer, but we have a textured ceiling and the tape doesn't stick super well. And because it's textured, the little tiny holes from the staples are barely noticeable when you pull them out. 
after we did the spray shelter walls, then we went back in and we did the ceiling. So I just used the plastic on the ceiling because I'm doing a white paint, we have a white ceiling. I didn't need it to be a perfectly crisp line, but you could go back in with painter's tape and make sure that that line is extra clean. Once you're all prepped, it is time to paint. Before I sprayed with the paint sprayer, I did touch up some of the areas where the brick got damaged or the paint on the brick was damaged just to make it an even surface to start with. Big thank you to Wagner Spray Tech for sponsoring this video so that I can share these tips with you. So for this project, I'm using the Flexio 3000 from Wagner Spray Tech. This one you don't need to thin interior paint, which is awesome. You just pour it right in and get it set up. I always recommend starting with spray paint or a paint sprayer, whatever you're spraying, not on the project itself. So in this case, I had the fireplace opening masked off. So I started on that paper there just to make sure that I got my spray pattern exactly how I wanted for this paint, for this project. And then you can adjust it, try again until you're happy with the spray pattern. Using a paint sprayer is not like using spray paint. You'll want to go slower and steadier instead of kind of misting lightly. So I find it was easiest for me to move really methodically through the fireplace bricks, but this will give you a really even coverage. In between coats, you'll want to clean your nozzle, but you can leave the paint in the bucket so you don't have to clean out the bucket of the paint sprayer. Just put saran wrap over that. After your second coat, you can pull down all the masking if you're happy with the coverage, and you can get to working on the rest of your fireplace makeover. Painting the brick was seriously that easy. All right, so the next things that we did was add this mantle and tile the hearth. So for the mantle, we had this piece of wood cut for us by a friend. We cut it to length, we sanded it down. We did leave some of the cut marks in it. I really love the character that that gives. And then we mounted it in place by securing concrete screws into the brick and drilling holes in the mantle. And then we slid the mantle onto those screws to hold it in place. We used construction adhesive on the bricks and in the screw holes as well. I feel really confident that this is secure and not gonna come down anytime soon. We used early American stain on this mantle and in the video it's showing a little bit more red than it is in person. For the hearth, I tiled this just using in-stock tiles from my hardware store. It's like seven tiles, so it went super fast. I'm not gonna do a full post on tiling, but if you have questions about tiling, I would definitely consider doing a video about that in the future, so let me know whatever questions you have in the comments. I chose to make my grout lines as small as possible because I wanted it to kind of look like a traditional slate. The edge that we chose to do, we put on after we tiled. Usually if you're doing an edge for tile, you would put it on underneath the tile. This one we had made from a local steel shop and it just slides right over top of the tile edges to cover it all. And then you're good to go. We inserted our fireplace right back in here after giving it a fresh coat of heat resistant spray paint. And you guys, it turned out so good. We were so happy with it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more DIY or home decor videos. And as always, if you want notifications when new videos go live, make sure to hit that bell. We'll see you guys next time.